Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah. Uh, I'm Herman, and today I will be talking about towards automatic instrumentation by learning to separate parts in symbolic multi-track music. So I'm now a PhD student at in the CSC department at UC San Diego. And my so this is a joint work with Chris Donahue, uh, postdoc at Stanford, and my advisors are Professor Julia McCauley and Professor Taylor Bergman. Kirkpatrick. Okay, so before I start it, uh, I'd like to talk a bit about myself. So I'm, I do music cross AI research, and now I'm a PhD student at UC San Diego. And before that, I did an intern at uh, Adobe and Yamaha, and I'm graduated from National Taiwan University, and I majored in WE. So in this work, we are interested in the topic of automatic um, instrumentation. And so this is a new task actually. So we define this task as like dynamically assign instruments to notes in solo music. So this has potentially two use cases. So for the first one is like, uh, as I shown in the left, that we could have, um, Usually modern keyboards have the function of um, zoning. And by zoning, we mean that um, we can assign different zones of pitches on a keyboard. And when the musician play the, the keyboard, then uh, it will sounds like you are playing multiple instruments at the same time. And this is not ideal because um, you can I mean, the zones are fixed and like it doesn't allow the musicians to play freely in whatever way uh, the musician like. And the other use case is in composing. So, you know, um, usually uh, a typical way of composing is that the musician will try to uh, brainstorming and try to come up with idea on piano or guitar, like very simple instrument and then uh, he or she will try to arrange that um, solo piece into uh, different ensembles. So this will be helpful if we have this kind of uh, system that could do automatic instrumentation. So the main problem here is that actually we don't have that kind of data that with solo music and its instrumentation. So we acquire this kind of data by dumb mixing multi tracks into single track mixtures. So as you can see at the right, so we it's easy to get lots of multi track music data, and then if we can dumb mix it into like pretending it's a mix a uh, uh, mixture, then we can actually have this uh, pair data to train our part separation model. And this path separation model is try to learn to infer the path label for each node in the mixture. So uh, let me play some examples. So here is like, what's the input to the model? Yeah, so this one is played by a guitar and what we want is a multi-track. Yeah, so we want it to be played by multiple instruments. Yeah. Okay, so here are the data set we use. We consider four different data sets of diverse genres and ensembles. So we have buckle rails and string quartets. We have game music. We also have pop music for like five ensembles. And they are in different sizes and like different ensembles. So for the model side, I would then go into detail here, but we consider using machine learning and deep sequential models to uh, approach this. So we have the online version that you only have the information of past information. You can not look into the future. And we have LSTM and the state of the art transformer. And we also have the offline model that you can look at the past and the future information to go together to, uh, uh, to do this task. And we also have three baseline models that are like um, heuristically designed. So we have zone-based algorithm, just like the, uh, the zoning functionality on keyboards. And we also have the process pitch algorithm and also a multi-layer perceptron algorithm that uh, come from a, a, a prior work. 
And so here are the improved features at the right. So we have time, pitch, duration, and we also have the time information for each note that are beat and position. Okay, so first I will, um, so here are the qualitative results of um, the, the model. So I won't go into details here because it's actually hard to uh, re uh, figure out what's going on like in the really like first glance. So basically um, the model is doing a great job and the, the cases I've shown here are all hard cases that you can see the model are doing arrows because it's actually hard for the models that either have some uh, overlapping pitch ranges among different instruments or you have like very weird uh, shape of music that's going on. And so we also have the quantitative results as we can see that uh, the, mo the model is generally doing a good job. And so we also show that like our proposed models outperform baseline models, including the heuristic ones and also the NLP baseline. And we also see that uh, BIOSTM outperforms RSTM, which is expected because BIOSTM can look into the future, but the RSTM cannot look into the future. And also we found that interestingly, uh, RSTM models actually outperform their transformer counterparts. Okay, so here is a demo of what our model can do. So you will first listen to the original instrumentation of a song. Okay, so, so now we kind of like hide all the uh, instrument information and try to use our model to regenerate the instrumentation for this Samsung. And so here's the result of the RSTM model that you can only look at the past, you can look into the future to generate the, the instrumentation. Okay, so here's what it sounds like. Yeah, so as you can hear and see from this figures that uh, the model do a really good job on picking up the bass lines and also the highest uh, notes into and assign them into streams, even though the original songs come with brass, but it's actually, uh, it's also possible that you can like assign different instrument to that particular song. And here's the virus TM output. Yeah, so we can see our proposed model can produce like convincing instrumentation for an exist existing arrangement. Yeah, so in summary, we propose a new task of part separation and we show that our proposed deep learning model outperforms various baseline. And we also presented promising results for applying this part separation model to uh, achieve the goal of automatic instrumentation. So for future direction, we want to try generative modeling of this task. We also want to try unpaired uh, automatic instrumentation and also uh, to pre-train symbolic music model using this task. So finally, this is a joint work with Chris uh, uh, Donahue and Taylor Berkebecker and Julia McAuley. And I would also like to thank the J. Young and Family Foundation for supporting my PhD study here with the J. Young Scholarship. Thank you. Does anyone have questions? Paul, I think you are muted. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm muted. So uh, yes, so uh, please, uh, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, 
uh, Howen. So uh, uh, can you see the two questions on the chat? Uh, yeah. You, yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, <laughs> this is a long. Um, yeah, first I read the question so that uh, we, we can uh, be yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, so the first question is, is the goal of this research to reduce the cost of a piece of music? Uh, no need for an orchestra. Um, so potentially, uh, yeah, there are two kinds of uh, ways that could be used in uh, music production. So first is that, yes, it could reduce the cost of a piece uh, to like writing a piece of music that uh, say you write a piece on piano and now you want to arrange it into another uh, um, say orchestra, then you can potentially use this model to first have a draft of like what's going on and then, so this could potentially help to reduce the cost that you need to hire some professional to arrange the orchestra. And um, yeah, I'm also, but still like, uh, like usually in current music uh, production line that if you want the orchestra, it's still played by a professional orchestra and the computer uh, generated sound is actually another field called music synthesis and yeah, that's uh, another direction of research. So yeah, we still need an orchestra if we want to create it. Um, and the second problem, it's really long. Let me read it. Um, yeah, so basically it's asking about whether we can make the model to produce modular music using different styles. Okay, so yeah, so this is one of the future direction that we are planning that. So basically this is not a one-to-one, -one, um, you know, mapping between the original song, like solo song and the instrumentation. It's actually a one-to-many uh, mapping that you have multiple solution for the same problem. So yes, potentially if we have the generative modeling, then we could have a, say a style input or a control input, say um, that could control the output based on the uh, different styles then. Yeah, but that will require a generative modeling of like remodeling this model. But currently we do not have this ability, but we will like to try. Um, okay, so just so, one more question yeah, on the yeah, handling so, of harmonic progressions yeah, and the training part. Um, I'm not quite sure about uh, the harmonic progression, actually. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and for the, the, do the generals of the training data affect the output? Yes, it is. Um, so, yeah, so it's actually interesting that um, we actually could try like using the Baccarel model to to like try to arrange a pop music like piano piece into like Baccarel, so that's possible. And it definitely um, depends on the genres that you train on. So Baccarel is usually four notes at the same time, and it's usually in the order of like uh, soprano, tenor, bass, and um, there's a typo here, like soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So it's arranged, usually arranged by uh, the, the pitches, but it's different in the pop music. So in pop music, only the bass is at the bass line, but the other four, um, other four instruments is also like possible to do anything actually. Yeah. Cool. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, that's one more question. Um, can this work handle, oh, oh no, this, uh, okay, sounds cool, okay. All right, so um, yeah. that's all the question from the audience. I do have one question is, uh, mm. uh, is can this uh, method be used in the real time setting? You know, just mean, meaning that making real time prediction while the musicians is in, interacting with the instrument or it has mm -hmm. to be post-processing. Yeah, so yeah, potentially the, the, the LSTM model is able to do this. So we have the online version and the offline version. So the online version does not look at the future information. So you have the all the past information and the current notes and you try to predict the label. So if we could make this wrong, uh, this model to run sufficiently fast enough that 
in like acceptable latency, then it's possible to make this particular model into a real time uh, model. But that will require some, say, you know, like um, more model fine tuning and try to integrate it in into uh, say keyboard. And but that would be really cool. Okay, thank you, Harvin. I think we have to move on.